Hello, hello to you, my fellow printed dweebs. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, birthplace of the Red Bull addiction. Here's what's going on 3D printing right now. We have an unusual amount of new out-of-the-box type things happening right now. I don't actually remember a time since I got into 3D printing uh, when we've had such a high frequency of things in such a short amount of time. Uh, these are crazy times. So this month, of course, we have to talk about Bamboo Lab and the new H2D, and then also any Cubic's new five axis printer, and then Flash Forge's 10 million color printer and Bontex index tool changer system. Yeah, crazy times. So first up, yesterday, Bamboo Lab officially revealed their new H2D printer, and it seems that the rumors are correct, or mostly correct anyway. This printer does have a dual hot end with an AMS type device that allows ultra quick color changes when using a dual color, but it also allows multicolor in the same way as its predecessors. Now I know people have strong feelings about bamboo at the minute. Uh, this time I'm just talking about what this printer means, okay? Yeah, let's get into it. The H2D looks quite similar to the X series, but it now has a linear rail for the X axis. It looks very well built, sturdy and rigid with a die cast frame. There is a USB if you want to do things offline. It has a version with a laser cutter engraver with a 10 watt laser or upgradable to 40 watt. You can add a cutting blade and pen for drawing and it has an upgraded AMS with drying capability that will be backward compatible with the older generation. It has a high temperature AMS. It has two hot ends and one can be covered while the other is printing to prevent ooze. It prints up to 40 millimeters cube per second and 1000 millimeters per second max print speed. You can upgrade the nozzle to a 60 millimeter cube per second flow. And to save weight, it uses the same extruder for both feeds. There was a lot of speculation about this printer when it was first leaked back in November or something. Uh, some are hoping for things that actually have not quite materialized. Despite having two hot ends, you cannot use differently sized nozzles in the same print. There was some hope, some people were hoping that maybe you would be able to use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on one hot end and a 0.8 on the other so that you could have the 0.4 do an outer walls and the 0.8 do an inner walls so that you can have similar strength, but with only using one inner wall instead of two, that would be the same width, meaning faster prints. Right now, that is not possible in Bamboo Slicer. The other thing that people were hoping for was that a single AMS would have the ability to feed into both hot ends and purge on the go. This isn't possible. A single AMS has to input into a single hot end and this printer still purges in the traditional manner albeit with a much faster filament change and less waste when using the second hot end and you can get a second ams and plug it into the second hot end if you want to do that but i think some people were really interested in having a single ams for both hot ends it is a very impressive machine it has so many features but i wonder if people actually care about this especially when it comes to the laser engraving, the drawing, and the cutting. I think most people who cared about this printer when it was just hearsay and rumor um, just wanted a bigger printer with faster filament changes, less waste, and maybe extra print speed. And yeah, we, we got that, but then all of these other things came around and they seem to appeal to less hardcore printer people, but rather a more applied customer base. It's a cool machine. It's a very cool machine. You can do real multi-material printing. You can print materials up to 350 degrees. You have a heated chamber up to 65. You have a bed that goes up to 120 degrees. You can draw, cut, engrave. Lots of people are going to find this to be a incredibly useful device. Whether you think it's going to be great, well, that's up to you. Okay, next up in cool devices is Anycubic with their, as far as I know, unnamed multi-axis robot arm printer. Yes, a five-axis printer from Anycubic. Crazy. Multi-axis printers are nothing new. Uh, Marlin has supported them for probably almost a decade now. Uh, and I actually briefly mentioned one in our what to expect in 2025 video. Weird. The main holdback on these kind of printers was 
twofold. One, slicer software. So there was nothing really universal. There was some community software that was integrated into other more, I'd say, relatively harder to use programs like Rhino. Uh, and the others that were totally custom and totally specific to one kind of build. The other holdback was stability. If you've ever seen a robot arm, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's a complicated thing. And it's all of these kinetics in one spindly arm. It's a challenge. But robotics as a field has, as I'm sure you've noticed, advanced in recent years, especially in terms of precision and stability. Unfortunately, there is not a huge amount of information about this printer just yet. It doesn't seem to have a name. It's still in design phase. But what I am hoping from this printer uh, as we've seen from other five axis printer designs in the past is two things, non-planar printing and zero support printing. Because if you have all of that flexibility in movement, then you can print with impossible overhangs and without parallel layering when you have the right nozzle. I have linked one printer down below, which runs on RepRap firmware, which demonstrates this. It is very interesting, check it out. Next up is Flashforge's new resin printer. This one actually isn't that new. It was teased at Foreman X last year, but they are launching a Kickstarter sometime soon and they were aiming for a mid 2025 release. I'm not sure if that's still on schedule, but we should have some new info soon. So if you look at Flashforge's website and check out their CJ270 and the specs and tech, some of you will probably see similarities between it and Mamaki printers, except that this printer is like a mega budgetified version of a Mamaki printer and it's smaller too, it's tabletop size. Mamaki printers are, they're incredible. You can get amazing details and true color with gradients and basically any color that CMYK can accomplish. They're resin printers, but with inkjet technology. The resin they use is pretty similar to what you use with a normal MSLA printer, and they simply jet out a bit of resin, just like a normal 2D inkjet printer works. Then they expose it to UV for a couple of seconds and start the next layer. What is really interesting about these printers is that they use a water soluble support. So when you're finished with your print, you just put this in water and after a certain amount of time, depending on what you're using to clean it, whether it's an ultrasonic cleaner or just a pool of water, uh, I've heard it can take between two and 10 hours, depending on what you're using. You have this beautifully finished print, totally smooth, perfect surfaces. There are virtually no tip pot marks that you get with standard desktop resin printers. Flashforge's CJ270 uses pretty similar tech, although it does have a pretty small build volume at 180 by 120 by 100 and a resolution of 720 DPI. Uh, this is actually pretty decent for a build area that small. It's not as good as more common MSLA printers, but better resolution than desktop DLP printers that we have these days. Layer height is quite similar to resin printers at 10 micrometers, but printing speed is relatively slow at 2.4 millimeters per hour. This is vertical print speed. So if we compare that against something like the Elegoo Saturn uh, Ultra 16K, which has a print speed of 150 millimeters per hour, there's a difference. Despite that, the claims of color accuracy and vibrancy totally set this printer apart from any MSLA or DLP printers that you would find in a 3D printing shop like ours. And keep in mind, Mamaki printers cost upwards of 30,000 euro per device. This one is aiming at under 3,000 euro. Crazy times, it's crazy times. All right, next up is Bontech's new Index, which is their take on the tool changer design. So not much is actually given away here. We see a clip of a printer, which is probably a Voron 2.4, given the flying gantry, and it has nine different tool heads. It looks like they have designed a compact tool changer setup, but the only thing that is being swapped here is the filament feed and the heatsink hot end part. There are gaps where the filament strand is exposed and they refer to a self-adjustable direct drive. So it seems that only the hot end is being swapped. The drive gear part won't even be swapped. It will just stay on the gantry and the gear will somehow fit around each filament strand. So I love tool changers and I hate the AMS and MMUs that we have these days simply because of the waste. Um, the only problem with my love for tool changers 
is that they're expensive. You need to buy multiple entire tool heads. In some cases, that is everything. So like the extruder, the probe, the hot end, a tool head board. Tool changers are really, really expensive and bulky compared to an AMS device. The Prusa XL, for instance, is a large printer, but it can only have five individual tool heads. This one on a 300 or 350 size printer has nine. And this should be a lot cheaper too than common tool changer systems because you're not swapping the extruder or motor, you're just swapping the hot end part, which is really cool. Unfortunately, that's all we got right now. It has literally only been four days since Bontech teased this on YouTube. So we're just gotta wait and see what happens. All right, that about does it for this month. If you want to start a discussion on what we reported here, you may do so below. You can also join us on our Discord server where there is chit chat about 3D printers on a daily basis. We'll be back with another video tomorrow. So until tomorrow, happy printing. We'll see you then. Later.